You're watching the Video Revolution Podcast from Primo Productions. Now, my friend, look, I am the greatest note taker in the world. I take 10, 15 pages of notes. Oh, boy, I got a lot out of that meeting. I take them on, put them in a drawer. Six months later, oh, yeah, I was going to do this, that, and the other. I mean, the tragedy of introducing new ideas, and I believe they'll be new to some of you, is it? Is it? You'll, you'll accept them right now, but uh, maybe three months from now, you'll remember 10% of what I said. Six months from now, you'll remember 1%. A year from now, I say, what the devil was the name of that crazy guy that jumped around and so and so? I am not going to ask you to adopt them. All I'm going to ask you, it'll revolutionize your life if you just try these six principles for one month, for one month. Okay, let's go to the first one. You and I have known all of our lives that one of the reasons that people buy is because it makes them feel important. My friend, look. Uh, you heard it say, I got to keep up with the Joneses. Hey, I got to have that new car. I'm going back to the family reunion. You and I have known that, but here is something far more important. Turn it over. Look on the other side. What is the car left? Doesn't it stand to reason? If people buy because it makes them feel important, if you are able to make people feel important, you've created their buying attitude. Now, I don't mean that sickening, nauseating massage of a person's ego. You give me an insincere compliment. I grab my pocketbook in one hand, my hat, I'm gone. Oh, no. The best way to make people feel important? Get the habit of considering that people are important. If we don't think people are important, try doing business without them. Oh, no, my friend. Listen. When you go in to see an individual about rendering any service, just as they cannot divorce the dance from the dancer, they cannot divorce the sales from the salesperson. They've got to buy you four times before they're even going to listen to you. They got to like you. They got to understand you. They got to believe you. They got to trust. You. Please remember this: selling has a lot of forgiving aspects, but no one yet has ever found out how to have a second chance at a first impression. Those eyes are a camera. That mind is a screen. You don't have any rerun. You can't say, I want to back up and do that over again. Oh, no. No, my friends, listen. You must go in and sell them on one idea. I am here to help solve your problem. I don't care whether you've been in business one day or one decade. It makes no difference. They don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. So don't try to be a big shot. Look, if you can't be a success being yourself, you sure as the devil going to louse it up trying to be something you are not. Everyone in this room is not only likable, you are lovable when you are yourself. You only accentuate your faults. You only exaggerate your shortcomings when you try to be a big shot. Let me give you a couple of examples where people made me feel important when they created my buying attitude. I was in San Francisco not too long ago. My wife said, go get yourself a suit of clothes. You're in rags. I went down to Brooks Brothers. I've never been in Brooks Brothers before. Kind of proud of myself. An old man my age and Kind of a wild race between senility, obsolescence, and retirement. I mean, I may not be over the hill, but I'm on top looking down. My wife says I think I'm the boat rentals of the Geritol. So, <laughs> anyway, I slipped this suit of clothes on. And I felt good till I saw the price. I nearly fainted. I turned to the clerk. I said, "Look, I owe you an apology. I didn't make myself clear. I did not come in here to buy your store. I only came in here to buy a suit of clothes. I took it off and I handed it back to him." And uh, he said, "Now wait a minute, friend." He said, what do you do for a living? I said, me? So I talk about my favorite subject? I said, oh, I fly around the country. I put on human hearing seminars, management clinics. I put on week-long sales schools. He said, yeah. He said, a fellow who does something that important ought to look important. Don't you think so? I said, friend, I think you got something there. <laughs> he said, that executive suit surely makes you look important. Now, you can see, I wear a 44 long, and this is a 42 short. But who cares? He said, he said, it made me feel important. I looked, I looked out the window the other day, and I saw a little pimply-faced kid coming down the street with books under his arms. I called my wife and said, come here, sweetheart. Let me show you something funny. Here comes a kid, thinks he's going to sell me books. I said, sweetheart, I teach these guys. They say, watch the old master wait. And I said, watch me, honey. I'm not going to hurt his feelings. I'm going to listen to his story. 
and I'm going to have him halfway down the street before he knows what happens to it. Watch how I do it. Kid came and knocked on the door. I went to the door. I said, son, uh, I'm going to listen to your story. And, uh, but I want you to know right now that I'm in a big hurry. I'm trying to get a plane, and I can't miss that plane. He said, well, that's fine. Is this where Cabot Rob lives? I said, yes, it is. He stopped, did a double take. He backed off, smiled at me with those big blue eyes. He said, could this possibly be where the Cabot Robert lives? I said, come in, son, come in. I got some books at home I know I'll never read. Bless this little kid's heart. He knew how to hit my hot button, my responsive note. Oh, please, my friends, would you try for a month? You won't believe what'll happen. You'll not believe what'll happen. If you just for one month go in and concentrate on that person's Prop. You know, right now, I got a big sign on me, and so have you. All of us have. Make me feel important. Don't rain on my parade. Don't blow out my candle. I don't want to be a number. I don't want to be a digit. I don't want to be a perforation under somebody's punch card. Oh, Bill, don't come up to me and stick your finger in my eye and try to dial a number. Look, I'm not a machine. Oh, I want to feel important. Not long ago, I spoke to the largest, well, the largest hospital in the world. They had 900 doctors. I went up and uh, I put on a, uh, a nine-hour seminar. I had 300 doctors in the morning for three hours. I had 300 doctors that afternoon for three hours. Then I had the young interns and resident physicians that night. And I went a day early because I wanted to hear one of the doctors talk to a bunch of interns. And he made the most profound statement I ever heard from the medical profession. I didn't know doctors were this smart. Is what he said to these young boys. He said, boys, do you know who's the leading doctor in every community? He's not the doctor who knows the most about medicine. He's not the doctor who's the best surgeon. He's the doctor who knows how to let his patients realize, I am concerned over your condition. Whatever's wrong with you is important to me. He said, you remember this, regardless of how sick your patients get, they're going to get well 99 cases out of 100 if you don't give them something to kill them. He said, you remember this, that nature is on your side. But when they are sick, stick your head in the door, look, call them by first name. You can look at the chart. Go over and feel their pulse. Put your hand on their forehead. Don't get so impersonal as to speak of them as gallbladder in room 13 or kidney down the car. When they do get well, they'll swell in a stack of bottles. You brought them through death's door. My friend, I don't know a lot about you, but I know one thing. You have the greatest, most divine quality that's given to any of us. The desire to come in, you want, you want, invest in the greatest investment on the face of this earth, an investment in yourself. Don't try to be a big shot. If you can't be a success being yourself, you'll fail. Oh, you have no second chance at a first impression. I'd like to leave with this little toast. May you always be cursed with the gift of dissatisfaction and divine discontent. I hope you'll have an unquenchable thirst for knowledge and an appetite for improvement that knows no solution. I hope you'll always be in grace with your God, favor with your friends, harmony with your conscience, yes, even in balance with your bank. I hope your kids will always have rich parents. You deserve kids like that. I hope in this great noble profession of ours, every morning when you wake up, you consider it a gift to be enjoyed and not a sentence to be served. May your faith always exceed your fear. No price is too great to go through London Freight. I hope you always think your best. Love your fullest and work your hardest. And if you continue to come to meetings like this, I'm going to give you two guarantees. First, I'm going to guarantee to you that all the good things will happen to you while you're on this earth. And you get your just share of the tasks and rewards of life. And I'm going to give you another guarantee. I'm going to guarantee you when the time comes for you to meet dear old St. Peter at the Golden Gate, he's going to let everyone of you in heaven one half hour before the devil even knows you're dead. Good luck. God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.